All right, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, welcome to the first session of the uh, Spring 2022 Employers Playbook for Talent on Transitions and Succession Planning. I'm really excited uh, for us to get started with this today. We've got a great group of sessions, and I'm super excited that we have this first one today um, on organizations um, psychology about change. Uh, so before we get started, I just have a couple uh, quick things that I want to make sure to mention. Number one, um, if you have not registered for all of the sessions or if you know people who are interested in the sessions, um, I will send out another copy of the flyer. We did have a fourth session get added. Um, Carrie Nagel from Schneider National will be talking specifically about how you know, a, a national trucking company handles this internal professional development. So I'm really excited for that one too. The other uh, thing I wanted to add is that if you did not hear about this, uh, Lakeland is offering a seven week course starting in March on data analytics and predicting the future. Um, we're having seven speakers from companies um, come in to talk about how they're using data. Someone from the Milwaukee Bucks is going to be there. Ashok Rai, the um, executive, uh, the president of Prevea Health, um, a representative from Google are just going to be some of the names who are, excuse me, who are there to talk about data analytics, a pretty important topic out there right now. Um, so if you want any information about that, you can by all means um, take a look at Lakeland's website um, and it is uh, posted right there on the front page. All right. That's enough for me. Let's get to the topic. So uh, today is a conversation with Yang Yi Lor. Uh, she is the president and founder of Faithful Consult uh, Consulting out of WASA. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to Yang Yi. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Christopher, and hi to everyone. I'm not able to see your beautiful faces unless you maybe unmute yourself and I see you pop up. So uh, we'll deal with the technology as we have it, but I'm so thankful and grateful to be here presenting on this topic uh, for all of you. So I'm gonna ask that you participate as much as you deem fit. So please chime in. This is, I like it to be pretty engaging uh, when I do these presentations. So feel free to chime in with any questions that you may have. So initially, we have a link that was put into, well, I forgot to introduce myself. I apologize. <laughs> Christopher didn't do the introduction. I should at least say a little bit about myself. So again, Yang Yi Lor, uh, President, Founder of Faithful Consulting, LLC. We are a small uh, but mighty uh, organization, growing organization out of Wausau, Wisconsin. We do service all over U.S. We have clients in California, Washington, uh, Minnesota, uh, Michigan. So we do a lot of the change management stuff to strategic planning, to uh, a lot of other organizational uh, development stuff, training, coaching, um, a lot of those things. So excited to be with all of you today and I, I wish I could get to know you a little bit more but I know I only have 45 minutes worth of time to present and also Q&A in the process and it's a total of one hour so I want to be conscientious of all your time but please feel free to connect with me afterwards I will have my contact information if you have questions about anything I'd love to just be connected with more leaders in this field so I am going to share my screen so there's going to be um, a uh, there. There is a, a URL. You are given the, the link down in the chat box. And if you click on it, it should take you to this Mentimeter. The first couple of questions, I have two questions for you. The first one is, what are your first three feelings when you're told that change is coming in your organization? So first three feelings. Feel free to type. You should have a window where it gives you Three different areas. Yeah. And I'm hoping that you can see this live. 
If you can't for some reason, please unmute yourself because I don't have the chat function. So Christopher is talking about me. I don't see anything in the chat. So um, hopefully he's monitoring that for me uh, as well. Excited, nervous, yes, I apprehensive, am. concerned. Thank you, Christopher. New, curiosity, get ready. <laughs> I wonder if some of you are are uh, in change management. <laughs> nervous, yeah, nervous. So the bigger the bigger the the word cloud is, the the more that people feel that way. So we got energy, new, uh oh. So take a look here. Feel we free. also have nervous, and it's going to be bad in the chat. Oh, yeah, it's yep, it's going to be bad. Yeah, yeah. So lots of different feelings, a mix all over the place. Uh, it's very common to see this in any change process. It's very normal <laughs> to, to have these mixed feelings. Here we go again. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's when I, I hear a lot. <laughs> And then the change is the only thing constant. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear these and. So great. All right, so then if you move to the next. Here. Oh, I should be able to. I'm sorry. I'm clicking, I think, on my shared screen and. There we go. The next question is, what are the thoughts that go through your mind when faced with change? So what are some thoughts. So you you had your feelings. Now, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? When your face would change. Feel free to put it into the the survey, and it will pop up. Yeah, how can I help with this? How can we do this better? Love it. I love new things. Can I do this? Why is this happening? Yeah. Love all this stuff. So if you want a copy of this for, for you know, afterwards too, Christopher can just um, request it from me and I can just download it and share with Christopher so he can share with the rest of you. But Here's some of comments. More work for me. Ah, <laughs> some of these I'm laughing and chuckling because I've heard it many times. Who will be the bottle bottleneck? Mm -hmm. What's next? Excitement, good or bad? More work for me. How to embrace the change? Change is good. Yeah. So again, varying degrees of thoughts and feelings. How is everyone feeling? Will others re how will others react? We can do this. Yeah, motivation. Okay, so awesome. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of those two questions because that's the psychology <laughs> of what goes on. I'm gonna share my PowerPoint now. Let me see if I can do this with much more ease. Uh, OK, did that happen? OK, good. <clears throat> now I'm going to share my PowerPoint slide. We'll start our presentation. But that was just a little bit a, a taste of what goes on. It's very mixed feeling. Of what everyone is going through. And that's one, so th that's things to consider as you go through change. So we just did this, okay. So today we're gonna learn about the psychology of change, all the emotions that you kind of alluded to, some of the things that you're you're all feeling, some very positive, some, ex uh, some very nervous, some, burden right more work for me oh gosh you know this the constant change so lots of mixed emotions i'm going to talk about change management 
and how that is important in the process of managing transitions in organization. And then I'm going to talk about as a manager or people leader, how do you lead and help other people through this whole process using the ad car model? I'm, I'm just curious if anybody in an attendee has heard of the ad car model. You can unmute yourself. Nope, nope, no comments. OK, so that's really exciting for me because I get to introduce something new to to all of you. <laughs> so and if you if you do and you know ab about it, feel free to. Oh, what happened? We have one oh. person who says yes. Oh, OK, awesome. they're just beginning to use it. Oh, wonderful. Perfect. And, and I love it. So transition as as we started doing with the survey is the inner psychological process that people go through as they internalize and come to terms with new situation that the change brings about. Empathetic leaders recognize that change put people in it can put people in crisis. Uh, any kind of leader, we, we got to recognize that. As you've seen with all the mixed emotions, change is hard is everyone handles change very differently. This starting point for dealing with transition is not the outcome, but the endings that people ha have in leaving the old situation behind. So as you can look at the transition uh, curve here, you got sudden shock and awareness. You got some numbness, denial. Uh, this is all the different processes that folks can go through depending on where they're at in their journey. and a little bit of personality, a little bit of skills mix in there. So if people, folks have more skills, adaptability, where they're at with their personality as well, all of those things can impact where they're at on their change transition curve. And so that's why it's so important that transition is very individualized. Change is very individualized. So change can only be successful if leaders and organizations address the transition that people experience. And this is supporting each individual. And that's why I love the ad card model is because it it helps people individually. It's an individual change model that you bring from. So the ad card model, I'd say, is here and you bring it up to the organization. So it's an individual model that you bring up to the organization. And when you support your 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 staff, your employees, right, the change can happen very smoothly. So part of the transition. So this is the bridges transition model. I'm curious if again, feel free to interact with me. I'm not able to see you all, but I want this to be as interactive and engaging as as you like it to be as well. So if you heard of the bridges transition model, let me know as well. This has been around for 30, 40 years now. Basically, transition happens at the ending. So you think, oh, transition is the beginning. It's actually the ending of something. And then that's where the emotions like shock, denial, fear, curiosity, confusion, all those things are, are, are part of that. And then you go through. So the, the neutral, which is the second step of the transition, comes letting go. This is where uh people go in between when the the old and the new and there is a, 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 they're still feeling things out um this is where the transition really happens this is the time between the the old reality uh and sense of identity and the new one and people are creating new processes and learning what their new roles will be. They are in flux and may feel confusion, distress. The neutral zone is seedbed for new beginnings. And then you have the new beginnings, which is a new understanding of values. You, you regain commitment, you get energized, you get excited again. Uh, you you um, recognize the importance of the change and you have the buy-in. So this is the different stages of transition that people go through in organizations. And 
So that's the people side of things. And I'm a pro sci certified um, change management practitioner. And if you are familiar with pro size model or not, or just any change management, we understand that their technical side is really important. This is the project management side. This is the design. This is the the develop. Um, this is how you go about different things, the, the process of things. But the people side of things is also as important. So the reason for change taking the and that's what I'm talking about today is the people side of change, taking them from the current state to the future state and in between is that transition state. And with only both sides is an organization successful. If you get really good at the technical side and you forget the people side, you're you're not you're not going to be as successful, vice versa. Um, the same the same thing applies the other way around. But I almost because I'm from the people side and this is my my opinion and, and perspective is when we get the people right, the technical part can also be right, too. So I lean more towards the, the change management or the people side of things. So change management is really where you fill in the dots. It's the process of filling in the, the you have the current, the transition and the future. And when you move people through to the future state, you're going to start to lose people. And so some of those boxes in there you'll see that is missing. That's where change management can really fill in. That's understanding the psychology of transition. So the emotions like that people feel, the thoughts that people feel, the, the thoughts that you're feeling, what, what you the activity that you did even at the very beginning, all those things apply. And change management fills in those dots to make sure that the future state is a full, right, a full puzzle. So, so that was pretty much the, the psychology component of things is what all of us go through. It's very normal. So it, for us to ignore that is a disservice and to, and to say it's not normal, that's a disservice to change. We have to accept that that's very normal. People have different reaction. Once we come to an acceptance of that, that everyone is going to handle change very differently, we can perceive it. The change management doesn't, doesn't um, change the reaction that people uh, have to changes. What it does is it helps manage. It, it says, OK, we understand. We understand change is hard, but we have a process to help you get through that. And that's with the ADCAR model. So the A stands for awareness. They, they understand the need for change. When you have the awareness, you understand that there's a need for change. And this is a beautiful example. I have to share that I was doing this presentation um, to uh, executive leaders at a, a college. And the perfect example that this leader, this new leader uh, gave was uh, of her ad car was, I got a new leadership role. I understand and have the awareness now that I'm gonna need new skills new skills to be a better leader and better lead my team. That was the awareness that that she came up with. And then the desire. Well, I want to uh, do good. I want to uh, participate. I want to support my team. I understand that this is really important. And so she created that desire like I want to be a good leader. That's her desire. I want to be a good leader. Knowledge part is on how to change. She understands that the skills that she had prior in her prior roles is not going to be what takes her current team to the next level. She understood I need to gain some knowledge, some training. I need to better have leadership skills, better manage. So she acquired, she understands this is the knowledge I need to get. And then ability, 
I'm learning. So her learning coming to the change management class that she was doing with me is one way of gaining that ability. So when you people start to gain that ability, th this is where you see change, th the fruits of, of your, your labor or ROI, the return on investment and change management process, because people understand now what to do. They, they now learn how to go through this ERP. They, they know how, about the, the ERP process. They know about uh, the computer. Maybe it's computer software. You're rolling out a new computer software. Now they can use it. So they, they're, they're able to do that and they gain a lot more confidence in this stage. They feel pretty good about, I have the skills I need to, to do the work. And then when it's reinforced over, whether it's by your leadership, organization, or even the individual reinforcing that. So in this leader's this new leader example that I, I'm giving, she is reinforcing it and her leader is reinforcing that, yes, I need to gain some more leadership skills and that will improve my leadership and I feel much more confident. And in, over time, I'm at, be able to lead my team a lot better. So that reinforcement over time helps support people through the change. A quick question for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you uh, could you talk a little bit about the importance of um, making sure that information is available early for people in that ad car? Three of those, three of the five, are really things that could take place before a person even sits down at a computer if it's computer software. Mm -hmm. You know, can you talk a little bit about the the foundational work from the organizational psychology side? Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's what I'm going to actually in the next slide. <laughs> well, <perfect. Oftentimes, laughs> what happens, whether it's at an organizational level or a leadership level, is communication is, is not the mistakes that leaders make or organizations sometimes make is not communicating enough or in communicating in a way that is biased. So maybe a leader, maybe not so much bought into this process, might be communicating about this process in a way like, yeah, we gotta do this. And uh, you know, it's just the way to like, there's no, there's no like, oh, I believe in this, right? <laughs> there's no, let's do this. And, and when employees hear this mixed signal, they, they have a lot of fear. Think again. The psychology right they're already fearful and so if you have a leader you have an organization that isn't communicating as clearly as as they can be about the change and what they what is happening those feelings of i'm afraid what does this mean how does this impact my work at the end of the day we as humans are built for survival we we want to know that we have some sense of security, some sense of safety. That we're not, we don't like to be in that fight or flight state of, of not knowing. So this is what can happen. So to that question, if, if organizations or leaders are not communicating to employees enough, that, that can create more of that, that, that fear that fear, that uncertainty, that unknown, and that's a very scary place for anybody to be. I don't care who you are, it's very scary. Um, so understanding that psychology and why communication is so important. The other is oversharing. So <laughs> creating unnecessary fear. So there is the other part of, of communicating is maybe you're oversharing, you got five tested technology and we're just on the technology topic you're trying five different programs and if you share all these five programs <laughs> to folks you're just going to create more confusion you haven't decided yet on what that program is so oversharing can cause more confusion and again create the same psychological uh fears uh that goes behind a person's um thoughts, feelings, resisting the change. So as leaders, 
when you you talk the talk but you're not walking the walk so kind of like that discrepancy you say let's do this you're talking it but you're you're passive aggressive about the change uh you turn this into a us versus them mentality i see a lot of this in organization uh and it's like okay well you're kind of creating your own div division within the organization, and that's just not helpful to the organization or your team. Putting anybody in that position is just not healthy. Failing to support staff. So understand that you have your own psychological emotions and thoughts and feelings you're managing. You're managing your own change process. But as a leader, you have to understand that you're also managing the, the change process of your staff. And sometimes leaders get so get sometimes caught up in managing their own change, they forget to manage or be present and support their staff through this change process. So just become more aware of that. Not getting to the root cause of staff's resistance and therefore not able to provide appropriate support. So this is where you're not asking the right question to see where the person is at. Is it the awareness state? The ADCAR model, as I've, I've talked about, the ADCAR model is how we change. How it follows a very linear process. So you have to gain the awareness and then I'm gonna go back to this slide because it's so critical. I, you have to connect this in order to, to get the next one. So you gotta gain the awareness and desire and knowledge and ability and be reinforced for change to, and habits to be created. And this is an individual model, but you take it back. I'll, I'll show you how you take it to an organizational level, but it happens in a very linear process. So you can't, you can't have someone with awareness and go to reinforcement. It has to happen in this order. This is how change happens in this order. Now you can backtrack. So for example, the ability. So an individual gets to ability, they're feeling really good about this technology implementation that you're having them type up their notes or whatever, they're using the computer software and they're feeling really great. And boom, there's a huge glitch or it, you, it, it's something didn't get backed up right. Now they can go back to, do I desire? Do I really want this? Okay, there's more glitches than we thought it could ever, or it didn't, it's not doing everything we want it to do. So you go back to desire or go back to knowledge. Oh gosh, I hit a glitch and I'm not able to do this process now. I, I go back to the knowledge stage of, I don't have all the skills. I need to learn all those skills. So a person can bounce back in full, back to any of these other areas of awareness, desire, knowledge, and ability. But you have to follow a very linear process. So once you gain the knowledge, the individual who might have thought they had the skills and ability to, to, to have this, to go through with this change, now is back in the knowledge because there's there's some new learnings that happen, a new rollout. So they're back in the knowledge phase and the desire phase of like, do I even want to go through this as more work than needed? And then they have to get through the desire knowledge phase and back to the ability phase in order to have this change be successful. So with that, not getting the root cause of staff's resistance. So where are they on the ad car model? Are they in the awareness stage? You have to really ask the right questions of your staff uh, or your people to understand where are they at in this process. Do they just not know? Maybe they don't understand. They don't they don't know the reason behind this change and they need to understand the reason behind the change. Then that's where you start. Or maybe it's the knowledge. Maybe they need to go to training. So asking and understanding where the individual is on their resistance and in the, the space of where their change process is will help you better support that individual to get to the ability and reinforcement and, and makes change successful. Not taking responsibility for their role in the change. So I, 
curious to, to know if any of you will say, oh, there's a change happening in the organization. For example, this this pro a new technology, we've been talking about technology process rolling out. Oh yes, this is what's happening. This is our little part. <laughs> so you, you have, okay, this is our little part. You're not really taking responsibility that this change is an organizational change. This is something that you want your team and you want everyone to be part of kind of say, oh, this is ours. We just, or maybe we're part of this. So not taking responsibility that you are part of this. As a leader, you need to lead by example. You need to lead with your other executive team in supporting this change. Again, if there's some discrepancy in, in any of this where people are hearing a mixed message, and le different levels of buy-in, it goes back to those emotional, the, the psychology of change. People are confused, people are frustrated, people get all those emotions that we were talking about. Um, ignoring the change, if I don't look change in the eye, it will walk past me. And I hear that. And so you, you've heard a lot of other reasons not seeking to better understand and know the change. That's another part of not taking responsibility is, well, I hear it's coming, but you know, it's, I got too much on my plate and it happens. We all do. We have a lot on our plate, especially in this day and age right now happening. Even today, there's a lot and to learn something new is, is tiring. It, it is is exhausting, but understand where you're at in your change management process and how do you, what do you need to do as a leader, as a person implementing this change, need to do in order to get you th yourself through that process, the ad car models to, to successfully accepting this change will benefit everybody else around you. So understanding yourself and understanding then uh, when you understand yourself will help you understand the, the folks you're working with or trying to make the change happen. So moving through change with your staff, leaders, organizations, communicate actively and openly. So again, there's a fine balance between oversharing, undersharing. But sheer factual, sheer accurate, sheer information that you know and reassure folks. Reassure folks, you can say, I'm not sure. This is also communicating actively. I'm not quite sure what's happening but I trust that whatever is happening, that we're as a team are gonna be okay. Even that communicating it is really effective in helping people get through the fear. Cause maybe they're just, okay, they just need that little reassurance. Engage and change and be a liaison. So be part, be an active participant in this transition, whether it's for the staff, the organization, again, for everyone, be part of it. Get yourself acclimated in this change process will only allow you to help others through it. Advocate and champion for change. So be an advocate, be a champion, be an encourager, uh, be part of the solution. <laughs> Don't be part of the problem. Identify where the resistance is and manage it. So as I mentioned before, see where people are at, see where your team is at, see where other leaders are at. Sometimes you're managing up where you have leaders you have to get, get through, especially maybe you have an HR function and there's a change happening and you have to get some leaders. You have to manage up and, and get some leaders to go through with the change. See where they're at in their resistance coach and support employees through the change. So th these are really important skills to have as you're trying to get people to feel safe with the change process. And some additional ways to manage resistance, once you kind of find out where, where they are, you listen and understand the objections. So you're, you're listening, you're understanding where maybe they're shutting uh, things down. 
The other thing when you listen to folks is you have to shut your own noise down. <laughs> you sh shut your excitement, your your fears, all of those things to really hear what that person is saying, what that leader is saying, what that staff is saying, hear where they're at and accept that they feel what they feel, what they're saying. In doing this, you can clarify any misunderstanding or provide a clear path forward. So really listen to hear and understand. Focus on the what and let go of the how. So reiterate the intention. Um, there's a really great example of um, a, a colleague of mine that shared with me about a large uh, process that they're going through in the state of Washington on their, their computer system and implementing, um, putting inputting uh, client and customer data into this computer system that they're rolling out. It, and it came back down to just the organization needed to reiterate the intention. Why are we doing this? Because it, it got to be, people thought it was going to be a smaller project than what it ended up being. And because it ended up being a bigger project and a bigger load of work than what they've imagined, that would mean more staff dedicated time, et cetera. Sometimes you have to come back to why, what is our intention? Why are we doing this? Sometimes connecting folks back to the why helps them, helps you help them to manage what they're going through, the resistance that they're going through. Allow employee involvement and ownership. Get people to, to be part of this change. How can we get more supporters, get them to support, have them be part of it, have them have some ownership. Well, will allow them to allow you to help them to get more buy in. Remove barriers, fully understand the individual situation with this employee. What may appear to be resistance or objections to the change may be disguised barriers that the employee cannot see past. So maybe this change means that they're closing down an office. Now I got to drive uh, to a new location and um, my family, it's impacting my family. And so it's an external factor but as we know, work life interacts. And so understanding where those barriers may be can be helpful. And in this day and age with technology and me even presenting to you all <laughs> via virtually, what are ways that we can be creative to manage these resistance? Maybe there's an option, for example, this employee that that now you have to you're shutting down an office you're moving to a different location it's going to impact that person's uh family and maybe that's a one-off where you have to be creative with that individual it's a it's he, he she shows great work ethic and it's, it's a very uh productive person in your company you don't want to lose you might make an exception say that person maybe he works off you know, offline, virtually, he's remote, he's a, he becomes a remote position. But understanding where the resistance in uh, is will be really important too. Sometimes it's not directly involved with the, the issue itself, but it's indirectly involved uh, with the issue. And then provide simple, clear choices and consequences. What are the choices um, employees have during change? Do they know what their choices are? Uh, sometimes giving them options helps them to say, oh, okay, I do have a say or input or, or options here. Create hope, show the benefits in real and tangible ways. Sometimes, when you're going through a change and maybe your organization is going through it, but oftentimes when change are implemented in an organization, someone else has been somewhat successful. That's just based on my consulting and experience. Have some of those folks come in and do a presentation. I was consulting for um, a medical company up in uh, Minnesota. And one of the things that we have them do is that the company itself makes parts um, that that goes into so so they make catheters 
and they don't get to see the impact. The employees don't get to see the impact of this on what they're doing in the real world. So they don't get to, to necessarily see the purpose. Bringing uh, people from the hospitals, doctors and nurses or individuals that use the catheters or even the patients coming in and telling their stories was able to build that connection of purpose for employees and manage some of that um, lack of engagement or, or purpose and those kind of things. Just storytelling like that, it was really important. And for them to feel rewarded, sometimes that's all people need <laughs> in managing uh, how different things are going to be changed, whether it's the way that the catheter is being built. These are things that you can be creative about. Make a personal appeal. If you are someone, and this is not about a position, if you're someone, whether you're a line worker, I've had folks where they are just working on the floor, but they hold a huge influence on other employees. It's because of their character, how they carry themselves, what they what they say, how they their character ultimately. And if that person, if you can get that person to make an appeal, or if you are that person and you make an appeal and just say, hey, guys, I know this is hard. We're going through a change and it's difficult. I understand you have a lot of feelings, a lot of mixed thoughts, and there's, I myself might even go through some of those things, but I trust that we'll get through it. Making that personal appeal when you're in a position or not in a position, but you hold the influence, that can manage the resistance and manage a lot of the fears that folks have. Convert the strongest opposition. I like this. Sometimes it's getting down and talking to the person who's resisting this change and understanding their ad car from earlier. Where are they at? Why? What is the reason for for the, 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 the resistance here? And if you can convert that person, sometimes that loudest voice in the room becomes the loudest supporter. Demonstrate consequences. In some rare situations, sometimes you just have to remove. I've consulted in organizations where sometimes we just have to move, remove that person out of their position because it wasn't in the direction of where the organization is growing, the change that's happening, the growth that they want to see. And it was impacting, it was detrimental to the people underneath um, this individual. Sometimes that has to happen. Sometimes you have to put people on pips. Sometimes you, you know, you have to just have a way of consequences if if this process is 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 not follow through to some degree. Of course, I'm a people person and I truly believe and care about people. So I always say this is the last cause, the last ca worst case scenario. If you can't get them to buy in to this change, then this would be a route to go. Provide incentives. This, this is what are the rewards? Maybe they get a gift card. Maybe they get increased in salary. And again, in this organization, I just recently finished my work, um, consulting work with, uh, they increased their compensation by over 50% um, for all employees, which is great. They created a great bonus program. They never had these things before. They promoted people. They provided um small little tangible rewards like picnics they they have gift cards for during um thanksgiving time that folks can and can can get everyone got and then they also had like little raffle tickets for uh, because this is a manufacturing company whoever came to work every day they 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 got like their name put into this drawing for a hundred to i think it was like two to three hundred dollars um, that they could get a gift card in. So just different incentives helps manage some of the resistance to maybe over time to, to the different kind of changes that will come. Any questions? I'm going to stop here and I'm going to ask to see, I, I talked a lot. 
And I want to see if there's any questions that we have because uh, I'll provide my contact information at the end here and I'm going to try to minimize this so I can see folks if possible. Any questions? I went through that really fast. And feel free to unmute yourself. I can't see you in the chat. So I know Christopher is managing that. What are your thoughts and what are some of the transitions that you guys are going through that maybe we can help with? If you're all okay to share. Um, I guess I'll speak up here. So just in general, when it comes to change management and, and teams on their journeys, as they're trying to figure out you know, what their problem is and how they're going to get there and getting the team on the same page, um, typically in your experience through your consulting, where have you seen teams struggle the most? Like what phase? Um, I think for me, it's oftentimes once you get the buy-in, that's the easiest. I think the beginning stages are the hardest is getting the buy-in. Once you can communicate the why and the intention, most folks, once they get that awareness, it's like, oh, okay, I understand why we're doing this. And then now you just have to, how are we going to go about doing it? I always say, keep the goal, change the strategy <laughs> in, in a lot of my work, right? Where's the goal you're going? What's the intention, the why you're doing things? And sometimes the strategy is going to change here and there. And I communicate that as a consultant with other folks because there's many different paths to getting to that goal. It's what's the right path for your team, your organization, that might adapt. And we all know in change management and even in project management, yes, we, we plan everything out in, in project management, X, Y, Z. We have all the steps, but we understand that you test, you might fail. <laughs> you, you test, you, you, then you, re, you come back and research that test a little bit, and then you adapt and you, you kind of continue forward again. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I appreciate that answer. Because even um, from experience here at HUI, we have gone through journeys where that th that's the biggest struggle, at least I've experienced so far too, is is getting the why out there and get everyone to understand it. Because I think what we've learned is you can't do that very quickly sometimes. And with a team, it takes sometimes months to at least get everyone kind of corralled around the idea. And, and you, we've learned too, you kind of had to fail as a team to figure it out. Yeah, and understand the psychology. So what I presented mm -hmm. earlier. So so where are they at? You know, I, I think understanding each individual. So if it's a couple different individual, where are they at in their transition? Are they some people as you we've even this earlier survey when I had you guys answer, some people were super excited. Yes, change. And mm -hmm. others are like nervous. Mm -hmm. This again, here we go again. Where is that person at psychologically in their change process? And so I think when you can figure that out, you can maybe pull that individual aside because, again, that individual is impacting other individuals. And so if you if maybe there's just one individual that. This is, again, it changes a very individual. It's a psychological state and change is a very individual state. So you have to pull that individual aside and have that conversation with that person to see where are you really at in that process? So it, I would say for you, a strategy for you, Mike, is when you look at your team and you're going through this, yes, you're communicating all that stuff. But if you notice a particular few people, you might want to just pull them aside and have conversations with them, understand where they are, where's their their nervousness, where's their resistance, right? We talked about resistance and coach them through. Maybe we're just not coaching them in, in the, the right way. And when you coach individual, you have to, and when you communicate and work with anybody, you have to work from the way they learn, and they understand. If if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, that does. That makes sense. And that definitely resonates, I think, with what we've experienced so far. So that, that's good. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Any other questions? I'll ask a question. How can you help people through um, what I'll call change fatigue? 
there's so much change going on. So maybe there's three different things that they're dealing with at the same time, and they might be in denial in one and acceptance in another, and they're, you know, panicking in another, and it's just one changes over, and then the next one starts, and then the next one starts. How how do you help people through that? Mm -hmm. Self-care. <laughs> lots of coaching, lots of self-care. So if you happen to be supervising this individual, um, I would be having conversations coaching this individual on what are they doing for themselves. Uh, I talked of briefly, I know I talked mostly about leaders managing staff, but how do leaders, uh, I took out the slides of how do leaders manage change for themselves? And in that is how do individuals manage that change? Again, we're going through so many changes. If we forget to be a self-aware and um, ourselves, create that desire for ourselves, create the knowledge, and we, we forget that we're going through this process, we can get lost in that change process and not see the big picture on how um, things. So as a leader seeing this from the inside, you know, from the outside, in is seeing this individual that is managing and seeing that I would coach. I would do a lot of coaching to this individual. I would see how uh, not only see where they're 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 maybe where their stuck is. Maybe it's not resistance, but it's it's a self care thing. They, they it's, it's like you said fatigue change uh, fatigue. I think we as leaders have to understand that that is very normal. It it exists. How do we best support them? Maybe it's how do we coach them to take better care of themselves? How do we maybe delegate some work, be creative about, okay, they maybe have three projects. Let's be creative. Can can some of this be taken off their plate um, while doing this? Sometimes, a lot of times, I should say, uh, folks just want a space to kind of vent and then they're off on their way. If they're very self-aware and they're a great leader and they're very productive and all and sometimes they just need to come in because they have this fatigue there's so much change happening they just need to empty empty their brain in a space safe space and pick it back up put it back in their brain and move on and that's it that's the sometimes all they need so i hope that helps um i without knowing this this situation very personally i i'd say see what that person is in need of sometimes it's just in need of looking internal versus external to the change that's happening thank you i do appreciate that i know some there are there are differing thoughts on that brain dump venting kind of thing on whether or not it's healthy and i tend towards it's the healthy side and i appreciate that you're feeling the same way so thank you yes for that. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. You have to have that space at work, a space, a safe space, and it doesn't have to be their supervisor, but everyone should be encouraged to have a safe space to just, it doesn't mean you agree even with all your thoughts. We have a million thoughts a day. We don't agree with every one of them, but it's nice to just clear it out, pick up the thoughts that's going to be productive and helpful and move. That's the psychology of keeping moving with change. <laughs> Thank you. I will take one more last question if we have any, and then I think um, I will throw it back to Christopher to close us out. And feel free to, again, my contact information, I think, is it still up or did I stop sharing? <laughs> it is still there. Okay, yes. So my contact information, feel free to connect with me, whether on LinkedIn, uh, email me, stay in touch. Um, I love all this stuff. <laughs> Everything that has to do with people in the workplace, I love it. I'm so passionate about it. So um, love to stay connected and share knowledge, share. There, there's things I can learn from all of you as well. So uh, if no other comments in the chat or questions, I'll throw it I mean, I'll, I'll throw another one out there for okay. you. Okay, yes. Um, so in this, you had a, a lot of focus on, say, like the individual psychology, right? How does a person interact and think about a situation when you're trying to drive change for the better, but they might not see it that way? Um, now, if you step back and our, our organization is very team based, right? So do you think that the uh, psychology of an individual 
that resonates as the psychology of that team? Or yeah. do you think there's any connection there? How does that resonate? Yes, yes. So we all are own, our own individual person and it impacts our team. But our impact, our team can, we can influence each other. So where we have control is ourselves, right? We don't have control over anybody. I don't have control over anybody but myself. So when you think about that, that's where the psychology starts from. So when you say you operate as a team, that's great, but you're still individuals within that team. And so you can influence and support one another through that change process. And you can be very collaborative, but on a very individual level, if someone is not there where you are, it, it, it can it can it can falter the team. So I that's why I say change is a very individual level. Psychology is a very individual level, but you can bring it up to the organization by saying, as an organization, as a team, how can I best support my team member who might be ch- struggling? That's how you can work as a team or as an organization. We're going through a lot of changes right now. How do we support our employees through this change? Let's come up with a change management strategy and plan so that they can be successful as we go through our business strategies and the outcomes that we want for our future as an organization. I hope that helps answers it. No, that's good. Um, That all makes sense. That's perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Ying Yi, for your time today. Uh, What an excellent conversation. I loved the active listening side of of change and psychology. I think that's super important. Um, and just thank you for all of the great tips and information. Um, I, I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say um, thanks again. Um, and thank you for the information and the contact information too. You know, hopefully some of our some of our registrants and participants might, if they have questions, they can shoot an email over to you, give you a call. Um, that's all available. Um, There will be an email that goes out after this. It will include a link to it. Um, This will be posted on our YouTube, Lakeland University's YouTube page. Um, It will also include the presentation itself. And um, does anyone have any final questions before we wrap up? All right. Well, thank you again. Uh, Our next session for the Employer's Playbook is March 10th. Um, Mid-Level Succession, the transition from entry positions into management with Kelly Gonzalez, who is a talent development manager for Kohler's Hospitality uh, Department. So I hope to see all of you there. Um, Otherwise, thank you again, everyone, for joining us, and I will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.